because it's actually three chapters again. It's chapters four, five, and sixteen. So sixteen is rainbows and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I know. So anyway, I saw the cutest YouTube video on a rainbow yesterday. It was the cutest thing. I've the ever. cutest YouTube video on a rainbow. <gasps> yes. So you made these videos, people. <laughs> The little girl saw a full rainbow, and it was over her grandma's house. So she's on the phone with her grandma's answering machine. There's a whole rainbow, and she told us all the colors. She said, and it's over your house, so I'm pretty sure you have the treasure. So you can find <laughs> oh, it call me back. Oh. It was so adorable. <laughs> I know. I like the one with Jim Cantore doing that uh, dunk 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 yeah, and yeah. Have you ever it? heard of thunder snow? You can we be thundering while it's snowing. Because yeah. like, like, usually the thunder thunderstorm clouds are cumulonimbus clouds. They're very they have a lot of vertical development is what they what they call in the biz. So um, in order to get um, uh, snow, though, usually comes from kind of not so much instability. But if you can get instability and snow, you're like. It came down. It yeah, happened here like five or six, six years ago. Six of them. Yeah. Yeah, we've had thunderstorm yeah. snow before. I thought it was storming. I mean, I look outside. I mean, there was a ton of snow, and it hadn't even been very long. It's one of those I things. Know. When you hear thunderstorm, just get the heck away from the roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. So, I don't know if you guys can see these little beakers up here at the front of the room. I brought these for you all. So, this one's about 100 Celsius. Um, this one's room temperature. The water down here is about uh, 25. And this one's got ice at the bottom. Okay, I so suppose. the water in there, it's not quite, oh, maybe about four. The thermometer is showing about four Celsius. This. So we have an assortment of temperatures up here. And we're going to be talking today more about kind of those three different phases of matter, um, gas, solid, and liquid. And so I'm kind of trying to get you used to, if you see milky white clouds, I told you it's liquid. It also could be little snow particles, too. It's either liquid or solid that's making it go like. Okay. So we're going to talk about phase changes. Um, so if you've been doing your weather log, which I might be getting close to having some weather logs done. I'm starting mine today. Starting yours today? Yeah. I wanted to wait until the weather was a little, but yeah. I'm doing April. I'm not going to really hit the thunderstorm. Yeah, <laughs> she's trying to pick the time I was of trying a, a four-week period where the weather's going to be exciting. But one of the things you've been recording is humidity, and humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air, water gas, water vapor, same thing. But you may or may not know all these different ways of describing humidity. So you on your weather log where it says relative humidity, I'm going to underline that to say weather log because that's actually what you've been recording. But there's other ways to say how much water vapor there is in the air. So relative humidity, sometimes called percent RH, okay, and this is what you've been doing for your weather logs. It's a great way of basically saying how close you are to probably being what we call the air is saturated with water vapor, and we're going to talk about that today, too. Good question. Uh, mm -hmm. When's the weather logs and the pictures and everything due again? They're due April 10th. It's a Friday. So the other, you're going to want to know these other ways, though, instead of just relative humidity or percent relative humidity. There's absolute humidity and mixing ratio. And I have a picture to show these two to you. And they're like little math ratio problems. What? Can beat them up real quick? No. Take it outside if, if you, you know. So um, in, in meteorology, as we get going, we're actually going to talk about little chunks of air. You know, and, and that's what we're doing here. So this is a little chunk of air. So it says, take a chunk of air, and it says you have a vol certain volume, you know what it is. And, and the pi I like the next figure because it says, in that chunk of air, you somehow analyze it and find out what is the mass of water vapor, what is the mass of water gas. And you do a division, and that is the absolute humidity. Okay. So notice that though this does not change, absolute humidity will not change with temperature because relative humidity will change with temperature. We'll talk about that. But absolute humidity will change with volume. And one of the cool things, and I'm kind of taking my hands and going like this, and taking my hands and going like this. Do you guys remember the weather balloons when they send them up? What happens to the size of the weather balloon? It gets bigger. Any chunk of air, if you send it up, is going to do the same thing as that weather balloon. Okay? So if you have a chunk of air that's rising and its volume is changing, then... 
Yes, absolute humidity is changing because that's the number in the bottom. So absolute humidity does change with volume. Mixing ratio does not change with volume. So the same picture I'm going to show you a minute ago, or a minute ago, in a minute, the, the same picture I'm going to show you on the next slide um, has that chunk of air. And with the same chunk of air, we're going to not only get the volume of air, but we're going to get the kilograms of dry air. The kilograms of dry air in that parcel. And we're going to do another division. We're going to put the grams of water vapor divided by the kilograms of dry air. And that's going to be your mixing ratio. And then in the next figure, you're going to see that chunk of air swell. Its volume's going to change, so its absolute humidity's going to change. But its mixing ratio won't change because the kilograms of dry air is the same. So there's a lot with this little picture. So, of course, hopefully you're getting used to those little Mickey Mouse molecules of water vapor scooting around in there. Okay. So that parcel or chunk of air, they've analyzed it, and it's got 20 grams of water vapor, and the volume is one meter cubed. Well, we happen to have a meter, <coughs> meter slash yardstick in here. Okay, so here's a meter stick. So basically, they're taking this times this times that, okay? So it's this on all, it's a cube of this, okay? So that's one cubic meter. So we could do the division and knock out the absolute humidity, no problem. It's that 20 grams of water vapor divided by the volume, one cubic meter. Okay, so the absolute humidity is 20 grams per cubic meter, 20 grams of water vapor per cubic meter of air. Well, they went ahead and with that same chunk of air, they went ahead and got the kilograms of dry air. And if you're like me, it's hard to imagine. You're like, you really get a mass of nitrogen and oxygen. That's the dry air. And they said, well, that's one kilogram. So we can go ahead and get the mixing ratio now. We're going to take this divided by this to get the mixing ratio. <laughs> Same parcel of air. So its mixing ratio just also happens to be 20. It wouldn't have to be. But here now the units are 20 grams of water vapor per kilogram of dry air. Okay, so at the end of chapter 4, we're going to talk about this parcel of air expanding as it rises. So here we go, rising, expanding. And in this scenario, your author said it expanded to twice its volume. Now instead of being one cubic meter, it's two cubic meters. So... Exactly. So let's go ahead and revisit absolute humidity and mixing ratio again. Okay. Notice that now absolute humidity is 2 grams of water vapor divided by 2 cubic meters, the volume of the new parcel. So it's, it, it lowered. It's less because the volume increased. Mixing ratio, what happened to the mixing ratio? No. It's the same. So however you look at this, can you get the sense for this is a different way of describing water vapor in the air, different way of describing humidity. It's not relative humidity, but it's humidity. Mm -hmm. So that third way of describing water vapor in the air is vapor pressure. So remember, vapor and gas are the same thing. Okay? And one of the cool things about gas particles is they have all this kinetic energy. So basically, um, the nitrogen's banging on us, the oxygen's banging on us, the water vapor particles are banging on us. And according actually to um, Dalton's law of, of partial pressures, they all kind of add up. So if we're running about 13 pounds per square inch, you know, bumping up against us, okay, some of that's nitrogen, some of it's oxygen, some of it's water vapor. So here we have kind of a parcel, and um, the green ones are nitrogen. Nitrogen is an element that likes to kind of buddy up, so that's why it's got two. Oxygen is another um, diatomic element, so it buddies up. And of course, those are Mickey Mouse water molecules. So 
So they're all in it together, creating what we call a pressure of the atmosphere. Yep. So actually, when we, I'm gonna, we're going to look at some figures coming up, and we're going to assume that the only pressure being exerted actually is by the water gas particles, water vapor pressure. Okay. Okay, so some terms that you're already really familiar with is evaporation and condensation. We've got it going on up here, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I have the lid on here. So we kind of have a steady stream of evaporation, but what's this up here? Yeah, we kind of have the steady stream. Exactly. Um, we're going to get to it today, but have you ever heard that warm air holds more water vapor, warm air holds more water vapor. So honestly, and I have a slide to kind of show this figure, but this over here, I'll kind of go in the extreme. This cold one, this kind of head space above the ice water, it's got less water vapor in it. It's actually mixing ratio is less. This is greater, this is less, this is something in between. So evaporation, you're going to see me go evaporation, condensation, okay? Um, so this one right here, especially the heated one, where you can kind of see the water condensing, the water vapor condensing, going from a vapor to a liquid on the glass, that's what we call saturated. It means that it's very active. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it can't hold anything. It's at 100% relative humidity, exactly. Um, and I have a good slide, I think, to kind of show you this. So you're going to see three figures from left to right, kind of time-wise. This is your first figure. Kind of think of like saran wrap lying over the water in the bottom. That's liquid water. Figure your chamber above the water is a vacuum, nothing in it. And then pay close attention to that cute little pressure gauge at the top there. So you remove the saran wrap, and immediately um, you're going to start, water's going to start evaporating, going from a liquid to a gas in the chamber. Okay. What happened to your, um, your pressure gauge? It goes up. That, that deflection is from the water vapor. <laughs> What's that? It increases. It increases, exactly. Mm -hmm. You were talking about the water contents at the water level? Water percentage in the cold water and warm water, mm -hmm. water saturation. Actually, the air above the water, the but air, yeah. Mm -hmm. The air, but uh, <coughs> in the fishing tank world, we fishermen know that uh, fast-moving currents have a lot more oxygen in it. Yeah, that's a different thing we're talking about. So you're talking about air in the water, and I'm talking about water in the air. <laughs> so, but maybe we'll get to that. But now, here's the deal. Um, Compare then, I'm going to go one more. I'm going to let time, time do take its course. This is the last of three. If you were to count or count the number of particles evaporating, I count one, two, three, four, five. The number of particles condensing, five. Okay. That, that even out is actually what we call an equilibrium. There's all sorts of, there's all so, sorts of cool, like, equilibria in physical science. It's a wonderful thing. It's a basically, it goes, it, it, what we say, proceeds or goes this way, the same rate or the same amount it proceeds or goes this way. <laughs> in this case, it's evaporating the same amount it's condensing. It's equal. So the cool, it, but dynamic. Once it gets to a certain point, right? Because like in the second one, Yeah, why isn't the second one saturated? Yeah. Well, it hasn't had enough time. Yeah, and why? Can't, what's the author showing with the figure? How much do we have evaporating versus condensing? Three, evaporating. Three evaporating, one condensing. What's that? I'm just the same place. It just yeah. doesn't happen until you achieve saturated air. Yeah, and, okay. and in order to achieve saturation, it just needs time, as right. far as I can tell. Time and maybe even kind of a stirring mechanism, depending upon kind of the physics of your container. But if you seal up a container, you can, it will over time, Go ahead and reach a little Chew. Excuse me. equilibrium. Chew. Excuse me. Question. And when it's at equilibrium, we call that air saturated. It's kind of a survival trick too. 
What? Kind of a survival trick too. Take a plastic bag and a cup and a rock. You put the cup at the bottom, put a rock on top of it. Put the plastic bag. You put the, you put the plastic bag on top of the cup. Put a rock on top of it. Then you cover it up from the hole. Okay. You you, can, you draw the uh, water out of evaporation. Ah. Magnifying the air in it. Okay. So you can get water over. To the thin out of dry. I believe that. So are there any questions about this? Does that does this the sh slide show a containment, you know, it's inside a box or is that just like right now, you know, open air? That's a container. Yeah, it has to be it has to be it has to be contained, yeah. That's not like our atmosphere right now. Right, that's not our atmosphere. The problem with our atmosphere is we have evaporation and we have condensation, but it's too open ended. It can kind of go I mean, it's not sealed. Right, so we have some absorption to the lands. The yeah. It's too many variables. Okay. Yeah, I think so. But uh, let me go ahead and add, do you guys buy this, that, that over here on the right, that this uh, is 100% RH? Yes. 100% relative humidity? Yes. Saturated? Yeah, and like you guys told me, we have the most deflection on the pressure gauge. So vapor pressure actually is a way of measuring water vapor. Okay. So vapor pressure. So remember <coughs> that all particles, all gases, nitrogen, oxygen, okay, water, oh, water vapor, okay, water liquid, not so much, right? Okay. So um, with regard to just the pressure that a gas exerts, you can, um, you can change the pressure by two ways. One is you can monkey with the temperature. And honestly, monkeying with the temperature only gives it more kinetic energy or less kinetic energy. Okay? So if you lower the temperature, they're moving slower, they have less punch. Literally, the pressure gauge will go down. If you were to inject more uh, gas particles, Okay, then they have more bangings going on at that given temperature. It's basics of a steam engine equation. Right. It's basics of a steam engine. Could be. It could be. So the next one is you can monkey with the temperature or you can monkey with the amount. You increase the temperature, they're going faster, more pressure. Okay, with regard to amount, you can add or you can uh, remove water vapor and change the water vapor. Right. Well, here we go. So look at it closely. What's the difference between these two? They're isolated boxes again. One's being the pressure is higher at the higher temperature. One's being heated, yes. Pressure high the pressure's higher at the higher temperature. You're both right. Yes, yes. I just think this is so clever. Yep, we got the Bunsen burner going on. We have the two temperatures. Yep, and we both have 100% RH here. Okay, so that's kind of what we have going on. And like, like, uh, like Joe said, it's very, we're definitely talking about an isolated system. Now, we're going to take this to the atmosphere here in a minute, but we have to talk about what, how, how water behaves with liquid, gas, saturation in a small does that work for everybody? And see, to me, over here, when you heated it up, you got two things. You, we, we saw that, um, can you see that you have more water vapor? Okay, is it still at equilibrium? Yeah. But you have more water in their liquid, in their gas state? Um, and do you think they have more uh, kinetic energy? Yes. So, there's the water mm -hmm. In areas such as Yellowstone National Park, where different uh, hot springs in different areas around the world, will the air above those areas be saturated, though the actual atmosphere, just as a couple inches away from those pools or those geysers, are right. at times below zero? Is there, it, there's localized saturation possible, like possible. Is that what you're talking about? Happens all the time with I'm fog. Yeah. 
Or yeah, was... I think so. I think so. So let's take a look at this. Now, first off, do you see where this actually is mixing ratio? Okay, mixing ratio along the y-axis, okay? Along the x-axis, we have temperature. And the title is, what is the saturation amount? So kind of the way you read this is this. That, let's pick, and the temperature pick there is about 20, not bad. So if we pick 20 degrees Celsius, and whether that's at Yellowstone or in this room or outside, what this is saying is if you wanted to get 100% relative humidity, if you want to get saturation, your mixing ratio needs to be, let's see, what's about 14. Yeah, if you have 14 grams of water vapor per kilogram of dry air, you are at a, you're saturated. Okay, so then what this slide is saying is anything that is actually greater than that, actually, it's going to have, water is going to be, you're going to have some sort of precipitation going on. Okay. It's going to be precipitating out. This is a good one. You guys told me that warm air holds more water vapor. So let's jack it up to, let's see, what are these? Let's jack it up to 35. That was 20. Let's go to 35 degrees Celsius. And let's see what our saturation mixing ratio is. 35, saturation mixing ratio. Yeah. Okay, now granted, 35 Celsius is pretty warm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm Fahrenheit. Okay, that could be 98. Okay, but you see that actually um, to reach 100% relative humidity, your mixing ratio is a lot higher. So that's how that goes. So it stays a water vapor. Water. Yeah, exactly. So if you're if you're saying, um, you know, what's what's 100%, what's a, what's saturated here at 20 is definitely not saturated at, at uh, 35. Yeah. So this table actually does the same thing. Okay, this table is that that curve. Joe. No, I, I know it's probably an example. But with the saturation, and when you get the ice fog, you don't have the humidity of the, the high temperature. You have a cool temperature with a high uh, uh, humidity. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. You know. Here, over to me, the way I look at it is water freezes at zero, right? Right. So the way I look at it is things right here, okay? If you have water vapor, for instance, um, say you're up to negative 10. I don't know if this is what you're saying, but to me this would give you ice fog. Because if you're negative 10 Celsius, okay, your air is going to be saturated with like, I don't know, three grams? That ain't okay. much. That's not much. But the point is, is if you do, at that temperature, if you reach saturation from your vapor to go ahead and, and come out of being a vapor to being something else, it's not going to be a liquid, it's going to be a solid. Yeah. So that's why, you know, I was thinking about that at my desk recently, that I, I honestly, let me pull up, I'll pick on purple color. To me, this right here, I guess everything kind of this way, actually, you're basically going to go from gas to solid. That's yeah. the way I look at it. And over here, you're going to go from gas to liquid. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I think, was that what you were kind of saying with ice fog? Well, yeah. Fog anyway, saturation solid anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Fog. Fog is. Fog. If it occurs over here, actually, fog is actually liquid water. Right. Yeah. But over it here. still evaporate because the time the sun comes out and the temperature rises, it mm -hmm. evaporates. It turns it back into. That's right. That's right. Well, let's hear it on my Ice fog comes in. Just call out of work for the next three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, well, let's hear it. So this is actually the same same we were looking at before. Let's pick on 20, see if we kind of come up with the same number. We said 20. Does that seem right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's the same, but it's in a tabular form instead of a... Okay. So actually, coming up here in a minute, we're going to pick on a temperature of 25 Celsius. So I'm like a magician. Remember 20. Remember 20 <laughs> is the saturation uh, mixing ratio. 20 grams of water vapor for one kilogram of dry air 
at that temperature. <laughs> okay, so now finally we're getting to what you guys have been recording on your weather logs. You guys have been recording humidity, which they record report as relative humidity. And now hopefully it can make more sense, maybe or maybe not. So what they do is basically one of the other humidity ways, they come up with what the water vapor is actually, and it could be mixing ratio or it could be absolute humidity, and they divide that by how much they need to reach saturation. And just to emphasize, if you want to, this one at the bottom, I'm just going to emphasize, you get this from the table. I don't know, get from table or curve. So you look up the bottom one, okay? So, I am, I see that. I'll kind of slow her down. Thanks. Um, so this is kind of something you already were kind of familiar with. The closer that, that number that you've been recording in your weather log gets to 100%, the closer like, yeah, it's, it's oppressive. And it might precipitate or something. Yep. Okay. So if, you're, if your goal is to reach 100% relative humidity, and we've been kind of talking about this in here this morning already, if that's your goal, okay, you have a couple of options. One is you can add more water vapor, okay, but the other is you can mess with the temperature. And as you mess with the temperature, remember I said that you get this from a table? Okay, as you mess with the temperature, just to kind of emphasize what this is, as you, as you mess with the temperature, you mess with the amount or you change the amount of water vapor required to reach saturation. Okay, so again, if we were to, I think the example we used a minute ago was to take it, something at 20 degrees Celsius, at saturation, okay, if you jack up the temperature to 35 degrees Celsius, you're no longer at saturation <laughs> because it can hold more water vapor at that temperature. Now, I have some examples coming up. I like, I like these examples. Okay, so remember I said 25 <laughs> on that table minute ago? Yeah. The, the saturation amount mixing ratio was 20 grams of water vapor at that temperature. So this came, this first line <coughs> in these examples we're going to see, that came from the table. Okay, this, the other, the second line actually came from the figure. So they're saying in this case, and it's definitely <coughs> isolated, kind of like we looked at before, you've got to isolate this thing. Um, in this headspace above this liquid water, we have water vapor in the amount of 5 grams. So we said you can knock out the mixing ratio would be, well, uh, yeah. The mixing ratio is one kilogram of dry air is five grams of water vapor per one kilogram of dry air. So it's five grams per kilogram. But down here then, they said, what is the RH? What's the percent relative humidity? Well, you have five and you can hold 20. You have five and you can hold 20 at that temperature. Yeah, so 5 divided by 20 is 25%, that's 25% RH. So the next figure, same temperature, but what's different here? There's more water vapor. There is more water vapor. So line number two changed. Okay, line number one didn't change because that came from the table. The second line changed because now we got 10. Yep. So now when we come up with the percent relative humidity, how close we are to saturation, we have 10 and we can hold 20, or 50%. And last but not least, okay. <coughs> so what's different about this one? Way more water vapor. Way more water vapor. Okay, water vapor. Exactly. So the first line, the saturation mixing ratio came from the table. The second line came from the amount of water vapor, 20. And this third line is to see how close we are to saturation, which is percent relative humidity. We have 20, and we can hold 20 at that temperature. Saturation. Saturation. Um, you also the bottle of the water actually has less water. Yeah, that's true. I like what your author did. They were they thought of that detail, too. So if you're 100% at that saturation, would you still have... Uh, 
evaporation? Yes. It's very, I love the word dynamic. It's very like going up and down, evaporation, condensation. It's like you could be a molecule in a gas one moment and in the liquid phase the next. Okay, but you would be swapped by another one. <laughs> what about so the mass stays constant. Current. <coughs> what about in the world picture? Um, I don't know how to answer that, but um, yeah, it's Talking it's definitely dynamic. It's still it's very, the world's very dynamic. Very dynamic. Okay, so to get 100% relative humidity, uh, one of the things you can do is to, like you saw a minute ago, add more water vapor at that same temperature. And these are simple examples of where do we, um, maybe not on purpose, but we inject water vapor into the room. And one is when you take a shower. Okay, you basically humidify your, <laughs> your shower. Okay, one is when you see your breath. Okay, when you see your breath, basically you have moisture from your lungs that is, is being expelled into a cold environment. Condensation. Yes, it's condensing, exactly, condensation. Um, the other one's kind of, uh, those are two stark differences, a cold winter day and the other one, don't you love it? Um, in the summertime, when you have these, uh, the sun's been out and you have kind of a spotty shower, and this, the, your, if your pavement got nice and hot, you can kind of see these steam things coming no. out. No, I don't love like that at all. I do. <laughs> a little rubbing steam, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a rope steam, exactly. Is there, and so, the reason being is you just going to get humid. Yeah, that's true. That means, and you talk about localized, and to me that's a really good example of, you know, you see the clouds. It's like a mini cloud, right? <laughs> okay. So you see the liquid, you know, the water condensing right there but it's not condensing up here. So you definitely have like localized uh, saturation, no saturation. So, you know, it's really a mixed bag. We've kind of made it simple with these figures. Speaking of figures, let's do another figure. And let's pick on these three temperatures. Whoops, okay. So the three temperatures are 20, 10, and zero. Okay, so 20, 20 so at saturation, uh, you're talking 14 grams at the higher temperature of water vapor to reach saturation per kilogram of dry air versus seven versus three and a half. So here's the figures. Well, it's half each time then. Yeah, yeah. Like you went down by it was half linear, the temperature it was half. and it went down by half the... No, I noticed it all says at sea level. Now, we're at different elevations relative to sea level. How is that changing? Pressure, yeah, know. I'll have to look that up. I think not much, though. I'm just reading what the slide says. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that the other day. I was like, sea level? So, yeah, we're above sea level. 792 feet. Yeah. I'll try to chase that down and see what I can come up with. I mean, it would be different if we were, like, you know, Denver. Yeah. That's wow. altitude-wise a lot different than sea level, but I would say here it can't be. Well, it's still different, though. Yeah. In the... Was right. it, was this, uh, at upper elevations? At upper elevations, there's a culture that actually, I've got the right area, that evolved there, human culture, mm -hmm. and everything else, as well as species of animals that are only found in that area that have adapted to the higher atmospheres and lower oxygen levels. He brought them out, they actually brought one of them, the individuals down here, and he outran every. <laughs> I bet. It's like unfair if you were... Oxygen. Yeah, it's kind of unfair. He outran everything. <laughs> so these three, these three uh, bottle uh, stopper uh, systems are going to be similar. So the first one came from a textbook, right? This one? This one came from the table. That's at 14 grams to reach saturation. The second one is what's in there. So we have 7 grams of, of water vapor for 1 kilogram of dry air. And the, the bottom one, number three, is, is calculating the percent RH. So we take uh, what we have is seven divided by what we can hold, which is 14. So we're at 50% relative humidity there. Um, the next one, notice that we're jacking the temperature down or cranking it down. Um, so on the table, you would see a seven grams is the amount of water vapor that can be held per kilogram of dry air at 10 degrees Celsius. Notice in this example, we have seven grams. Right. So we're at 
saturation. The temperature went down, but yeah. And so what's going to happen when we go to zero degrees Celsius? It'll be oversaturated. Yes, it will be oversaturated. So what's going to happen? It's going to more is going to you're going to get a puddle. Right. A oh, puddle is going to form. Mm -hmm. And so, in this case, I don't think it would be a problem. So that's like when some people open their door and it has a humidifier running in their house in the wintertime, and the heat expels the moisture, pops into a cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be true. Because the, 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 cold, the cold air out there, um, that the saturation amount is a lot less. So that air cools down and it condenses. Yeah. So are there any questions about this last one? So on the table, it can only hold three and a half grams of water vapor, and it was sitting at seven. <laughs> okay, so that's why um, it'll only hold 33.5, but 3.5 will precipitate out, so you get the color down the bottom. Mm -hmm. I thought that was good. I did a good job. The bottom line. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you're trying to, uh, oh, sorry, the bottom line, yeah, what I've been saying, it's 100% relative humidity, you could expect some sort of condensation. Um, so forms of condensation include uh, dew, frost, fog, cloud droplets. And if your goal is specifically to increase the relative humidity, pushing towards uh, condensation, you can lower the temperature or increase the water vapor. Those two things. I hate to I hate to interrupt, but you need to actually put a picture in that slide. Why is that? You of a bottom? No. The bottom <laughs> line? You need to put a picture of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh. <laughs> okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Because Stone Cold said so. I think this is a good a good place to stop. We'll take a running start at the material. I have a couple of videos to show you about um, relative humidity and humidity. So. We should get rid of your We'll do that on Wednesday. Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday.